performers, whether in the practice room, teaching studio, or on stage, often spend time immersed in a significant amount of sound. Exposure to this sound can have serious consequences for health and well-being, with the potential to cause permanent hearing damage. Thus, employers and organisations often have legal requirements to monitor and protect those who work within loud environments. Internationally, noise directives generally regulate the amount of noise in working environments. This includes, in the UK, the Control of Noise at Work Regulations 2005, which is based on a European Union directive and sets out the noise levels to which employees can be exposed, including those in the music and entertainment sector. They require employers to prevent or reduce risks to health and safety from exposure to noise at work. Reducing noise risks in music and entertainment is not about diminishing art or preventing enjoyment of it, but about protecting people and ensuring their full participation and enjoyment for as long as possible. National Noise at Work regulations often set out the maximum amount of noise to which an employee can be exposed, as well as how much noise over time is acceptable, before the risk of hearing damage is too great. In other words, the limit of pressure that sound waves can exert on the ear and the acceptable dose of noise over a working day. Sound pressure is measured in decibels, or dB. The scale is logarithmic, so each increase of three decibels represents a doubling of sound energy. Each increase of 10 decibels represents a tenfold increase and 20 decibels a hundredfold. Therefore, Two instruments, each producing 85 decibels of noise, will together produce 88. Ten such instruments will produce 95 decibels. The dose over time can also be considered in decibels. 105 decibels, such as a brass instrument at full blast for five minutes, is equivalent to 94 decibels over an hour, a nightclub bar, or 88 decibels, chamber music, over four hours. Reducing noise can therefore mean reducing the peak loudness, reducing the loudness over a period of time, or reducing the amount of time exposed to noise. To provide an example of noise at work regulations in practice, we will outline the UK system. These regulations require employers to monitor specific action values or decibel levels at which they need to take action. These relate to the levels of exposure to noise of employees averaged over a working day or week and the maximum noise to which employees are exposed in a working day. There are three key sets of values, called the lower exposure action value, the upper exposure action value and the exposure limit value. The lower exposure action value represents an average daily or weekly exposure of 80 decibels and a peak sound pressure of 135 decibels. At this stage, the employer must provide information and training and make hearing protection available. The upper exposure action value represents an average daily or weekly exposure of 85 decibels and a peak sound pressure of 137 decibels. At this stage, the employer must take reasonably practicable measures to reduce the amount of noise and provide hearing protection where this is not possible. The exposure limit value is the legal limit of noise to which a performer can be exposed at an average of 87 decibels in a workday or week, or a peak sound pressure of 140 decibels after subtracting any effects of hearing protection. Performers can be at risk of passing each of these thresholds. Measurements done among professional orchestras have found most sections surpassing the lower exposure action values and some moving past the upper values in a typical working week. These levels are highly situational, depending on the instruments involved, the environment, proximity to the sound source and the length of the time rehearsing or performing. The main duties as part of these regulations fall upon the employers or those organising the activity, though individual performers can also take action to protect their hearing. This includes assessing risks and minimising noise, as well as providing education and hearing protection. 
Ignoring noise at work regulations comes not only with legal risks, but also serious and potentially permanent damage to performers' hearing.